Hello and welcome to round 2 of AOR Season 16 PC Assist League 1 and um, yeah it takes us to Bahrain which um, is actually quite a good track for mine, uh, of mine but I don't know I've honestly got to say I haven't actually liked it as much on this game as the prior games I mean there are a couple of curbs which are very nasty around this track and it's just um, the S section coming up I also tend to struggle on so um, yeah my time trial time isn't exactly the best um, even so yeah hoping for a better result in Austria uh, Australia and um, actually honestly that wasn't that bad of course massive progress from um, this time last season I mean although I haven't actually been able to put that much time into the game um, I definitely seem to be um, nearer the front than I, than I was last season which is tend to be the trend in AOR um, I mean I tend to have a season near the back um, a season near the front and then a season near the back and a season near the front even so I've gone from Assist League 2 in season 13 to Assist League 1 in season um, 16 obviously so it has got harder and harder as the season's progressed but um, I seem to move up a league and then struggle in it but then the next season I tend to do fine so you can see now I haven't actually had the best lap um, this is actually my final lap of the session on um, old Supersofts and once again I'm trying to qualify P11 because um, if I qualify too high up then of course um, I tend to um, uh, of course I'm committed to the two stop which is by far the slower strategy so trying to um, qualify P11 you can see I'm slipping down to P13 so we're a few tenths up um, on our previous lap as we um, take, turn um, the final corner um, but of course I'm just trying to get that elusive um, P11 of course we're not good at qualifying in general but um, as long as we can get 11th but actually we get 9th in the end so um, I actually tend to normally qualify outside the top 10 but um, so many people actually decided to qualify on the soft tyres that actually we qualified P9 which is actually um, going to hurt us in the race because we're committed to the two stop and um, of course it just shows that we've got a bit more pace compared to this time last season of course most people actually opting for the super softs but Schwalb, um, Kareka and PR release um, all opting for the softs on qualifying and managing to qualify in the top 10 so that's good for them as um, Edge a dominant qualifying once again with a 26.0 um, Schwalb 26.6 on soft tyres so once again these two are definitely the guys to beat but I definitely think I'm they're in the midfield um, this season so I'm def definitely not last place like I was this time last season so um, that's something definitely I can um, well um, cherish but you can see um, we have to actually opt to, for the two stop and this is really going to damage my race because the one stop is much faster the softs onto the mediums so Schwal looks like he's in a really good position to win um, especially as he's starting in the front so yeah we'll just have to see and just hope we can get a really good start but you can see um, as we skip onto the from starting lights five lights and it's actually quite a long delay but away we go finally and once again we get a poor start you can see Kareka gets a much better start than us and he's on the source and we get jumped by PR release as well so not a good start at all but we're going to try to go around the outside of um, PR release um, of course he is on the softs and we actually get Dan by one for another soft runner being Saddam Hussein as well so um, actually losing two positions off the start but you can see Reborn Destroyer is actually disconnected so um, yeah um, <laughs> that's probably one of the issues already I mean of course um, it's quite a new game but um, I think definitely quite a lot of people um, well it, you'll see later on it actually caused a few problems a few people disconnecting but um, as for, for now we're up into P10 as a result of um, that disconnect and uh, already trying to put pressure on Saddam Hussein of course we've got the um, newer tyres right now but they're only going to last a few laps um, considering I actually did two qualifying laps on them because I wasn't actually expecting to be inside the top 10 so once again not really um, doing so well on the strategy side of things so that's something I really need to think going into China because of course that's a really good track for me so um, should I risk trying to go maybe top 5 in qualifying or should I try to start on the um, harder of the two tyres um, so I can push for that one stop um, but you can see up ahead there's a massive battle and you can see PR release actually goes a bit wide he's on the curb and um, yeah, as you know in recent games you get on the curb you lose tons of time and he gets done by two people around the outside it's Saddam Hussein already trying to get Kareka um, we're back up into um, P9 um, which is now P8 as somebody's in the pits but we're actually demoted to P9 again by PR release he's going to get us in a straight line we're actually coming under attack from his teammate as well so the Toro Rosso is both absent um, well both not getting points last week but this week they seem to be back with a vengeance and of course Heiko is now our admin of, um, of this league so um, the first time Mad Dog hasn't been admin of a Sicily League 1 in over a year so um, yeah I mean he's definitely um, quite a good host well he's quite a good host so far I mean there hasn't been many people lagging I mean there's been people disconnecting but I think that's more their fault um, than the actual host's fault but you can see we are uh, well we're back up into P8 again as um, I think somebody else put it um, but yeah we're just sticking quite well with the pack as PR really goes wide again we're going to retake his position up into P7 so we're slowly making our way through the field which is um, actually pretty weird um, considering we normally get really terrible starts 
But you can see that's our teammate up ahead, and he's in P4. Um, of course, the top three is slightly um, too far ahead. But, um, yeah, we're not too far off them. And you can see um, Darkseid now beginning to struggle in the super soft. So that's what I'm sort of saying. Um, they begin to degrade, degrade away after lap six. And um, I was thinking of coming in this lap because my tyres were already degrading. And I was sort of committing onto a double soft stint. As you can see, Horvey is actually in a podium position. He's actually retired. He goes through his car. Luckily, not getting front wing damage. But he brings up the safety car. So that's absolutely huge. And that's great for me. Dark side and the rest of the super soft runners because now we can go onto the softs this lap and base effectively get a free pit stop. So that basically um, saves all of the two stop runners who before would have lost 20 seconds in the pits, but now we will only lose about 10 seconds, and that must that's absolutely crucial because it means we're all back in the race. And um, the likes of Schwalb and P Release, who started on the softs, of course, have sort of lost their advantage. So um, all of their strategy, which they tried, um, is actually not going to pay off. Uh, because of the safety car, but unfortunately we do have to double stack. We can see our teammate went on to mediums, and at this point I was thinking, uh, is he crazy? Because um, surely he must be doing a, a super soft stint at the end, because we've got 23 laps remaining. And um, yeah, I mean, of course the wheel, um, on the wheel, um, the tyres do last longer, but still. I mean, I was struggling to last the super soft six laps, let alone the mediums, 23 laps. But um, I don't know if my um, teammate is going to make another stop or not at this stage, but... Um, of course, you can only presume if he's going on mediums that he is trying something audacious. Um, as we come out in P8, um, as we uh, catch up to the safety car, um, yeah, the safety car wasn't actually out for that long. Um, so in lap 8, it's already coming in. So it's only out for a lap and a half, two laps. And you can see this gimp up ahead who um, actually um, probably paused his game. And he thought, he's probably thinking that the safety car is going to be out just as long as it is in F1 2017. And that's his mistake because it's only been out a lap and a half. And as a result, I think he's still away from keyboard. And um, unfortunately, um, we are going to... Um, well, fortunately for us, we're going to get sixth place pretty easily. As you can see, he's disconnected. So, of course, that's something I was doing during um, the um, safety car. It's just wise to sort of um, um, basically go into the start menu. Because that way, um, the ghost takes over. You can see Kareka is going to pin it into the wall out of nowhere. And um, now, next up is Coyote. And this is for fourth place. So, um, I basically, I've um, only got one stop left. And already into fourth place now, so I'm pretty much a, le a legitimate fourth place. I mean, Karnak is um, maybe going to the end, but you can see already picking off the laces one by one. We're going to get good traction on Karnak as well, and this is for the podium. And uh, I, I mean, last time I've been looking at this position was um, this time last season um, in the second race of the season, which was China. But of course, that wasn't really a legitimate podium because so many people did the London Cup. But this time we are looking at a legitimate podium, and this is what I'm saying. I mean, I saw it move from the slowest on the grid last season. It's actually one of the, well, not front runners as such, because I mean, Shroud and Edge right now are in a league of their own. As you can see up ahead, they've been squabbling for a few laps now, um, sort of um, swapping and changing positions. Um, but as a result, we're actually gaining on them. So even though they're so much faster than us, we actually might be in a five-way scrap for the lead. So all of a sudden, I was really getting excited. I mean, of course, the last time we actually won a race was Singapore, and that, um, Singapore in, in season 14. And that so happens to be my favourite race of all time, of course, when I had that really good battle with Richie B for the lead. And all of a sudden, I mean, if I could take a podium out of this, I just knew that this would probably be my best race of all time. I mean, it's such a strong league as League 1 in comparison to Assist League 2. I mean, you've got the likes of Edge and Schwalb, who are top 20 in the world um, on some tracks. I mean, yes, we are using Assist, but still, these guys can pull... Um, the absolute limits of their cars. So to be able to fight with them, as you can see, Shroud's actually getting quite a lead on us now because um, I let PR release and um, Dark Side pass because I think they are definitely slightly faster than me still. They probably are the upper echelons of the midfield runners. But you can see they're already hassling and hurrying Edge. And as a result, Shroud's getting ahead, but I do a really audacious move on Dark Side. Um, he actually breaks really early, and as a result, I tried to sneak up his inside, which in hindsight was really stupid because I nearly spun him out and, um, of course, nearly spun myself out. So. Luckily, it didn't end in tears there, but you can see Edge um, and PR release are still side by side. And as a result, Schraub is beginning to pull a gap. So even so, he got screwed up by the safety car. Um, he still is in the lead, um, in the next lead, um, in all, all schemes of things. It depends what Karnak's going to do. But you can see up ahead, PR release and Edge are fighting hard and Edge is in the wall. So, I mean, I didn't really see much from my point of view. But okay, after the race, of course, I'm seeing other people's perspectives, I think. Edge was defending really hard from PR release, I think moving over and stuff um, in the slipstream zones. And I think, unfortunately, I think PR release just sort of came across Edge um, and took him out. But um, now you can see PR release and Darkseid going side by side. And this is the battle for P2 now. Because Edge, who of course won the last race, um, last race, is now out of the race. And as a result, we're going to, well, we're basically in a battle for P2. And all of a sudden, things are looking really juicy um, between all of us. But, but you can see uh, Darkseid now, I'm um, putting... 
PR release under pressure. As they're going to go side by side. Dark side is actually going to have a better line into the corner. PR release is going to try to hang it around the outside. He's slightly squeezed out and um, yeah, Dark side has the position. So right now it is advantage Dark side in the battle for P2. But of course we can't count out Karnak because if he is going to the end, he is still an effective P1. You can see um, PR release is actually going to peel in the pits. And we're going to be re released into what is P3. But it says P4 because um, as I said earlier, um, a, a reborn destroyer's ghost car is now um, starting to pull um, a few um, a few problems because you can see already it actually says this ghost car is in P1 and of course I mean this glitch has always been present in Code Masters games. Um, you can see now he's P3 as if you know taken by the other two, but um, you can see he's actually not racing in this car. But sometimes um, desyncs can uh, say people are in positions which they're not. But um, you can see his car is clearly not ghosted and. This is something which was really bugging me because you can see this car is actually trying to hang it around the outside as if it's an actual driver. But you can see the, the, X size, X, um, the X sign clearly indicates it's not as we peel into the pits. And this is our second and final pit stop. We're actually going to decide to go on to softs because um, yeah, the, the tire wear on the pad is pretty horrendous. Especially as I don't really know how to drive because I keep driving on the curbs. Um, so actually I've kept this really clean this race. I've actually only had two warnings so far. So... It's been a really good race compared to last time where I had 9 seconds of penalties. So I'm actually looking at maybe what could be my only my first penalty free race in I think a season and a half. So it's looking really good so far. But you can see PR release um, had a bit of damage of course after his coming together with Edge. So he pit early and has actually managed to undercut us. So, um, but of course he is on mediums. So he should be easy pickings um, in the next few laps. But again I was sort of thinking now should I have stretched it a bit longer. Because the, um, the super softs although they don't last too long they are, are really fast. So... Um, you can see again, that's actually dark side. He has stretched it a bit longer and he's pulled the overcut on us and he's on the super soft. So it's three way battle for what is probably P3 now because Karnak seems like he's going to be staying out. Um, yeah, it's, it seems, it def I think it's definitely advantage dark side. Of course, he has got the super soft. So he's looking set for a podium right now. But if we could just mop up the pieces and um, um, we'll get what will be P4, that would be a great result as well. You can see dark side now just trying to already putting pressure on the P release. So he definitely looks like he's going to take P3. But you can see going through the corner, he's actually slowed down a lot. We're going to try to get him around the outside. I don't know what's happened there, but there's bits of front wing off. He's actually going to swipe us off a bit. He's actually going to completely take us off the track. And um, yeah, I didn't know what happened there because it just looked like he completely turned into me. And as I was saying earlier, Reborn Destroyer actually caused issues again because if you actually look at his um, POV, as I'm going to link down in the description, you can actually see that the Reborn Destroyer's ghost car is in front of him and actually brake checks him. Um, and then, of course, he tries to get past it, but of course, it breaks checks him again, which is why he went straight on. So, um, yeah, as a result, we get front wing damage, and he's basically out of the race. So, um, yeah, once again, the ghost car um, basically screwing up everyone's race. And that was re really a shame because I was on course to actually overtake P release on much fresher tyres, and um, that would have been me into a podium. I mean, Heiko, um, the, the lobby um, host, you can see already he's hunting down um, everyone really quickly. Um, of course, on his super softs, but I honestly think if I maybe just pit a lap or two later on super softs, I could have easily got P release. I would have been ahead of Heiko, and um, but yeah, I would have been in the podium position, which would have been my first podium, um, well, since season 14, really. So it's a really a big shame there because, of course, I mean, it w I originally I blamed Dark Side, but of course, in hindsight, I know it wasn't his fault at all. But it definitely was annoying at the time, and I was actually close to firing, filing a steward's inquiry until I knew the full picture because it really did ruin my race. Um, but you can see now Saddam Hussein on the penultimate lap is going to catch us up, and this is just insult to injury because um, the damage has really slowed us down. Um, we are about five seconds ahead of this guy coming out of the pits on the same set of tyres, and as a result, he's been able to hunt us down pretty quickly um, on the, his on his um, basically car, which doesn't have damage. And um, yeah, as we end on to the final lap, we're going to get try to get in the slipstream, just try to get the position back. But of course, with little front wing damage, we're, we're not going to be able to do much. But but on one saving grace actually could be the fact that we do actually only have one penalty, of course, after being shoved off earlier. But you can see Chase CP launches one up the inside. He actually gets the pair of us, but he's actually going to rejoin really aggressively. And I was pretty pissed off about that, to be honest, because he completely dive bombed us, missed the corner, and then tries to rejoin really aggressively. But that was the least of my worries, really. I mean, still um, down to P7, so. A really horrible last few laps considering I was battling for a podium. But that's just what front wing damage can really do to you. And um, yeah, unfortunately we are going to cross the line in P7. Of course, just hoping that these guys in front of us have a few more penalties than us. Because of course we only have one penalty, of course, after being shoved off by Darkseid, giving us our third warning. But um, yeah, we're going to cross the line in what will be a P7 on track. 
But will we be able to get in position? Yes, we will. We're actually going to get P6 in the end as JCP had a few more penalties than us. But you can see Karnak, my teammate, wins the race on the one stop from Supersofts, pitting on lap six. So what a strategy there. And he manages to beat Schwalb in the end. So um, yeah, brilliant stuff from my teammate. Of course, he got a podium last time out, but able to make miracles on the strategy. And as a result, he's actually going to take the championship lead. Four points over um, Schwalb. Edge still third place, which is a testament to how good he is um, in the car. Of course, his win last time out, enough to secure him third place still. Fourth place will go to Saddam Hussein as we also move up quite a few positions um, to be in the mid-pack. As we move on to the um, constructors, you can see Red Bull and Ferrari tied on points. Um, and then Toro Rosso and Red Bull, um, sorry, Toro Rosso and Renault are quite a bit away be um, behind them. Um, almost actually half our points. But you can see as we hang on to the results, Karnak wins incredibly from Schwalb. In the end, it was actually Schwalb who actually finished ahead on track. But Karnak, who actually didn't have a penalty and would ultimately win the race. Heiko actually finishes within 10 seconds of them. And that really frustrated me even more because I honestly think I could have been up there with him if I didn't have the front wing damage. Maybe not in third place, but probably easily fourth place because I had the pace of a PR release. But um, yeah, that's going to be it for this um, episode. See you next time at my favourite track, which is China.